Good afternoon. It's great to have you all in worship this afternoon, and as we are streaming online, we welcome all those who are worshiping with us online as well. We're glad we could all worship together, even maybe at a distance as the weather is bad this afternoon. The theme today's, for today's service is His Final Steps Led to a Tomb. The theme for this, these midweek services are His Final Steps, and each week we'll have a specific theme for that day. We continue with the opening hymn, hymn number 396, Christ the Life of All the Living, stanzas 1 through 3. service can be found up on the screens. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us, that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 7. For even if I caused you sorrow with my letter, I do not regret it, even though I did regret it, for, regret it, for I see that my letter caused you sorrow, yet only for a little while. Now I rejoice, not because you were mad, made to feel sorrow, but because this sorrow resulted in repentance. Yes, you were made sor sorry in all godly way. So you were not harmed in any way by us. In fact, godly sorrow produces repentance, which leads to salvation, leaving no regret. On the other hand, worldly sorrow produces death. Yes, look what godly sorrow produces in you. What diligence, what eagerness to clear yourself, what indignation and what alarm, what longing, what zeal, what correction. 
In every way, you proved yourself to be pure in this matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not because of the one who did what was wrong or because of the, what, of the one who was harmed by it. I wrote instead so that your genuine concern for us would be revealed and you in the sight of God. For that reason, we have been comforted. The word of the Lord. We continue by singing the next hymn, which is Psalm 51, Create in Me a Clean Heart. bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we confess our sins to you and plead for your mercy. We acknowledge that sin runs too deep in our nature for us ever to rid ourselves of it. But we thank you that Jesus has done what we could not do, washing us clean of every stain. We plead that your spirit would give us the strength to live a new life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the gospel. Our gospel lesson for today comes from Matthew chapter 6. Be careful that you do, do not do your righteous works in front of people so that they will notice. If you do, you have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. So whenever you perform acts of mercy, do not sound a trumpet for yourself as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be praised by people. Amen, I tell you. They have received their reward. Instead, when you perform acts of mercy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Then your acts of mercy will be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may see, be seen by people. Amen, I tell you. They have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go in your private room. Close your door and pray to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what others cannot see will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not make yourself look sad like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show everyone that they are fasting. Amen, I tell you. They have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that it is not apparent to people that you are fasting, but only to your Father who sees what is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up treasures for yourself on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures for yourself in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. At this time, please fill out the attendance cards that can be found in the pew in front of you. You can use also the QR code that's found up on the screen and also in the bulletin. For those who are worshiping with us online, you can find a link above, above or below the video. Thank you for your cooperation. Since we do not have the choir singing today, we will continue with singing hymn number 396, Christ the Life of All the Living, stanza 4.
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is Ash Wednesday, dear friends. And on this day, we especially think about our sins and what Jesus has done for us. Isn't it astounding when you think about what he went through for us? And why did he do it? It's because of selfless, sacrificial love undeserved by us in any way. He took our place as our substitute. He lived for us and then suffered and died. He went through such agony, more agony than any other human being has ever gone through. It's astounding when you think about what he did for us. But it's even more astounding if you consider the fact that as God, he knew what was coming. Everything. He knew that he was going to go through that agony, and even being forsaken by God. He knew what was coming. Every lash on his back, every betrayal, every pound of the hammer on the nails as they went through his hands and went through his feet, he knew all of that was coming. And yet he went through it all. Willingly, he continued to make those final steps to the cross. So we are walking with Jesus. We're going to walk with him through these midweek worship services, having the theme, his final steps. And today, we're going to walk with him as he makes those final steps to a tomb, the tomb of Lazarus. And as he makes those steps, it is all happening according to God's plan. As he goes to that tomb, it is at the right time, according to what God wants. It is according to his prophecy that he was going to raise him up. It was at the right place. It was all according to God's plan. And so as we take a look at these final steps of Jesus to the tomb of Lazarus, we want to see how he emptied that tomb for us and for our faith. How he emptied that tomb in, other, in order to bring about his plan of salvation. So we are using John chapter 11. Because it's a whole chapter, I'm not going to read it at this time. I'm going to be pulling Bible passages out of John chapter 11 as we go through and we see how he made those final steps to that tomb of Lazarus. So Jesus is going to make this trip. And he knows what he's getting into. He's going to Bethany. And Bethany is a small village not far from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the headquarters of the Pharisees and the scribes, teachers of the law, many of which were his enemies. Oh, they were dogging him every step of the way. They wanted to try to trap him, trip him up, get him to misstep in some way, try to get him to say something or do something that they could use against him. And yet not even one misstep. Because, of course, he's God and he's not guilty of anything. But, oh, how they were looking for something. But you know, as Jesus makes this trip then to Lazarus' tomb, things are now going, of course, as always, according to God's plan. But now things are really heating up. You're going to see that after he raises Lazarus from the dead. And so he receives word from Mary and Martha. Lord, the one you love is sick. So up until this time, those enemies of Jesus weren't allowed to take him. It wasn't yet time. But now, as I said, things are heating up, and so now Mary and Martha have a problem. Their brother is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not going to result in death, but it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
Then he said something that was puzzling to his disciples. So he made it plain that he's going to go, but he didn't go right away. He tarried, he delayed, and, and it puzzled the disciples. Jesus loved Martha, it says in John 11, and her sister, and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed in the place where he was two more days. Then afterwards, he said to his disciples, let's go. You would think that as soon as he heard the message from Mary and Martha, he'd get going right away, try to get there as quickly as possible. But oh no, he delayed purposely. Why? Why did he delay for two days? Well, it's so that it says in our text, the Son of God may be glorified. That's going to come out when he raised Lazarus from the dead. The Son of God may be glorified. Why did he tarry? So that Jesus would be able to say to his disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. He also tarried or delayed so that the disciples would respond by saying, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will get well. They're thinking that Jesus is talking about physical sleep. Jesus is talking about something else. He's talking about death, but he's calling it sleep. And so he patiently takes the time to explain to his disciples, and all of this is taking place according to God's plan. All of this is happening as he delayed for two days. Lazarus is dead, he said to his disciples, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So what's happening here is that Jesus, making his final steps to the tomb of Lazarus, is going to empty that tomb for us and for our faith, for the disciples, for the strengthening of their faith, for Martha. You remember what happened as Jesus was coming close to Bethany, Martha heard he was coming close, and so she ran out to meet him. And as she ran out to meet him, she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, wow, twisting the heart. Jesus felt the sorrow, the pain that she was going through. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And, and he says to her, your brother will rise again. Her thoughts went to the last day, the day of resurrection, the return of the Savior. And then we have the words of Jesus that gave her such comfort. And these are the words that we long for. These are the words we long for when we're standing next to the grave of a loved one who has died in the Lord. These are the words now he shares with Martha, and he shares with us, as maybe we find ourselves at the grave site, and the pastor says, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, and earth to earth. For such moments as that, we need to hear Jesus say these words, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even if he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never perish. Do you believe this? And Martha said, yes, Lord, I believe that. Do you believe that? And we say, yes, Lord, I believe that. We say that also every time we come to worship. We say that every time we confess our faith together according to the creed. Yes, I believe that, Lord. You are the resurrection and the life. So then Martha returns and tells Mary. Lord would like to talk to you, Mary. And Mary goes out. What does she say? The same thing that Martha said. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. He hears it again, <laughs> twists his heart. Oh, he's feeling the sorrow. It says even in our text, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. And he wept. 
grieved as he saw the grief that they were feeling, the grief that they were going through. And he knew what he had to do. And it was all according to God's plan. He was going to go out to the tomb. So he said as he reached the tomb, take away the stone, Jesus said. Martha objected. Lord, by this time there will be an odor because it has been four days. Of course, at that time they didn't embalm the body, and so a body decays quickly. And after four days, it, it's going to smell. It, it's going to be nightmarish in there. Opening up that tomb wasn't a good idea. But because you said so, Lord, we're, we're going to open it up. But Martha had objected and said, Lord, by this time there will be an odor because it has been four days. Nightmarish to them, but not to the resurrection and the life. Not to Jesus, who has the power as God to raise one from the dead. For he is the resurrection and the life. And this is what he said and guaranteed. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And after he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out with his feet and his hands bound with strips of linen and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus told them, loose him and let him go. Wow. Power. The power of God. Who did that benefit? Certainly Mary and Martha. How glad they must have been to have their brother back alive and well. Lazarus. Seeing power of God, that God had raised him up, knowing that God works everything for the good of those who love him. Lazarus, knowing that with God, nothing, nothing is impossible. And then for the disciples who witnessed the glory of God in Christ Jesus, and then for us, right? This is a portion of God's word that is such a comfort for all, of the, for all of us. We need to hear these words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. We need to hear these words of Jesus as he cried out loudly, Lazarus, come out. We need to see with eyes of faith that Lazarus came right out, alive and, and well. Nothing is impossible with God. Here we have a proof of what the Apostle Paul had said and, and wrote down under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as an eternal truth. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He emptied that tomb for us, and for our faith. And so as we find ourselves mourning the death of a loved one, or we find ourselves someday on our own deathbed, we hear Jesus' words, I am the resurrection and the life. And we see how he calls the death of a body simply sleep, and he will wake that body up. He will raise it up just as sure as he raised up the body of Lazarus. So as he made these final steps to the tomb, he emptied it for us and for our faith. And he emptied it in, our, in order to bring about his plan of salvation. You remember that I talked about those Pharisees and those chief priests, those teachers of the law, and many of which were enemies of God, and how they wanted him to misstep, make a mistake, say something that they could use against him, do something that they could charge him with, and yet they couldn't find it. But now, as all of this took place with this resurrection of Lazarus, 
Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Oh, how they came to hate him. You would think that they would love him. And there were people certainly that believed in Jesus and loved him, but there were enemies who now all the more wanted to get rid of him. How jealous they were of him. How they hated him. Their hate was just boiling over into a diabolical plan to get rid of him, to kill him, to crucify him. And you know, this was all according to God's plan. Their anger, their hate, their devilish plan was, of course, their responsibility and all sin, not God's fault, but God was using it. God was using it to bring about his plan of salvation because now things were really coming to a head. Now the cross was at hand. And this really, probably the mightiest miracle that he had done to this date really set things off and set things into motion as far as his final steps. It says, so from that day on, they plotted to kill him. All according to God's plan. All of this happening and Jesus going to the cross at, at the Passover. The Lamb of God. Jesus fulfilling all scripture. The Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. Jesus, so we've looked at what he did for us and how he made those final steps to a tomb, to the tomb of Lazarus, how he emptied it for us in our faith and how he emptied it in order to bring about his plan of salvation and he lays before us the truth. But he says so plainly, so clearly, we take with us from this house into our everyday lives, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Responding to God's amazing love, undeserved love, we cheerfully give our offerings to our Lord. As the baskets come around, put in your attendance guest card, and as they're brought forward, we dedicate all of our offerings given to our Savior from our hearts. As we do, we sing verses 5 and 6 of that hymn, 396, Christ the Life of All the Living. our prayers for this evening, we include a prayer for Lisa Lang, who has been hospitalized this week. Please stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with Lisa, who has been hospitalized this week. We give you thanks for the improvement that she has had so far. We ask that if it is your will, that she continues to improve. We also ask you to be with her and strengthen her in faith and in her family's faith as well so that they know that you are always with them and will never abandon them. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, it is with humble and contrite hearts that we enter this day, the holy season of Lent, to meditate upon the bitter suffering and death that you, the innocent Lamb of God, endured for us. With deep sorrow, we confess that also our sins, which justly anger God and call for punishment, 
were the cause of your suffering and dying. God chose to spare us by laying upon you the iniquity of us all. O Savior, it is with mixed feelings that we consider your agony-filled death. For while we sorrow over our sins that caused it, we also rejoice over the salvation it brought us. We who by our sins have made ourselves God's enemies have been reconciled to him by your death. Eternal life is ours through you. Amen. And we join in the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper and members of our church and church body come to Holy Communion, approach up the middle aisle and return by the side aisle. When indicated, kneel or remain standing at the, at the rail. Receive the, wafer hand with, receive the wafer with an open hand and take the wine cup yourself from the tray. If you prefer to be handed the wine cup, simply hold out your hand. Hold your wafer hand up like stop if you would like a gluten-free wafer available in a sleeve on the tray. Non-alcoholic white wine is also available in the middle of the cup tray. Cup receptacles are along the walls. If you choose the common wine cup or chalice, help by tipping it, by tipping it holding the base. The general blessing will be given at the end of Holy Communion. Please come for all things are now ready.
Please stand. Now this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith for life everlasting. Go in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We will remain standing for the closing hymn verse. may be seated. Good afternoon. It's great to have you all in worship then. Uh, the weather hasn't been quite as bad as they said it would be so far. That's good. Great to have you here. Um, if you haven't heard, there is no meal between the services because of the weather. Uh, so that'll be rescheduled for another day coming up. We had some openings, so um, they'll find a spot to fill that in. Um, and I believe that's all the... Oh, there's one bigger announcement. Tomorrow we have our quarterly voters meeting uh, at 6.30, I believe, or uh, 6.30 in the school cafeteria then. So um, we'd like to have a good showing for that. The Lord bless your evening. <laughs>